What are the two different types of municipal bonds? Are munis safe? And who might they be best suited for? Hello, members and super savers. I hope you're having a good week. These are the three questions I'll be answering in today's video because quite a few of you have asked about munis. No surprise there though, right? Because who likes paying more taxes than they have to? As usual, here's our front of video disclaimer. For a detailed disclaimer, please refer to the end of this video. Let's dive in now, folks. Municipal bonds, often referred to as munis, are debt securities issued by states, cities, counties, and other government entities below the federal level so that they can pay for day-to-day -day obligations and fund capital projects such as building highways, schools, and so on. So when we buy treasuries, we're lending money to the U.S. federal government. When we buy munis, we're basically lending money to a specific state, city, county, or other local government entity. According to the Securities and Exchange Commission, there was about $4 trillion of municipal securities outstanding at the end of 2022. And about 40% of outstanding muni debt is issued within California, New York, and Texas. Most of the new issue munis that we've seen recently have maturity dates that are two years out or more, but there are shorter maturities available as well, especially if you're purchasing munis on the secondary market. Do note that while some of the leading brokers do not charge a fee for purchasing new issue munis, nearly all brokers will charge a fee for purchasing secondary market munis. Municipal bonds generally pay interest semi-annually, so twice a year, and like most other bonds, will return the face value or par value upon maturity, assuming that you hold your municipal bonds to maturity and there is no default. Muni defaults are rare, but they have happened before. More on this later. Many income-oriented investors are interested in purchasing municipal bonds because they're relatively safe in terms of credit risk, default risk. More on this later as well. But perhaps what makes munis most attractive is the fact that the interest earned on munis is generally exempt from federal income tax. And in some cases, even exempt from state and local income tax if an investor lives in the state where the bond is issued. Let's go through the two broad categories of municipal bonds out there, general obligation or GO municipal bonds and revenue municipal bonds. GO bonds are issued by states, cities, or counties and not secured by any assets. Rather, they're backed by the full faith and credit of the issuer, which can tax state, city, or county residents to pay bondholders, similar to how treasuries are backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government. So, for example, say that you as a muni investor buy a GO bond issued by the state of California. That GO bond is backed by the full faith and credit of California, which can tax California residents to pay you the interest owed on your municipal bond. GO bonds account for 28% of the investment grade muni market, meaning they're rated triple B minus or better by Standard & Poor's and Fitch, or BAA3 or better by Moody's. And for those of you who are as familiar with credit ratings as you are with the periodic table from the days when they still called it junior high school, we dive into bond risks and credit ratings in these two member videos. I've linked them in the video description below if you're interested in exploring further. Here's a slide from those videos on which credit ratings are considered investment grade debt. So that was GO bonds. The second broad category of munis, revenue bonds, are not backed by the taxing power of a state, city, or county, like GO bonds are. Rather, revenue bonds are backed by revenues from a specific project or source, such as electricity usage fees, highway tolls, and hospital revenue, hence the term revenue bonds. Revenue bonds account for approximately two-thirds of all investment-grade munis outstanding. Because GO bonds are backed by the full faith and credit of the state, city, or county that issues them, they have historically been considered to be of a slightly higher credit quality than revenue bonds. In other words, investors generally perceive GO bonds to be a bit less risky than revenue bonds. But as the diamond nest egg regulars on this channel know, Lower risk usually means lower return, lower yields. This table from Schwab 
shows the difference in yields between GO bonds and revenue bonds. As you can see, local GO bonds, so those issued by cities and counties, are perceived to be a bit riskier and therefore carry a higher yield than state GO bonds. And revenue bonds, which are perceived to be slightly riskier than GO bonds overall, carry even higher yields. And keep in mind that the yields shown are a fair bit lower than what you will find for treasuries and other types of bonds. Because municipal bond interest earned is free from federal taxation. And as I mentioned earlier, in some cases also free from state and local taxation if you live in the state where the bond is issued. You can check out this video on Fidelity's tax equivalent yield calculator to see how the yield on your CDs and or treasuries compared to the yield on munis. I've linked it below for easy reference. Also, as you can see from this table, not only the yield, but also the average credit rating and term can vary across the different types of municipal bonds, which is a great lead into our next muni question for today's video. Now, I know that a lot of members and super savers in our community hold I-bonds and other treasuries. That is how many of you found us after all. So many of you have also heard me say on numerous occasions, treasuries for all intents and purposes are free of credit risk because they're backed by the full faith and credit of the US government. That's why treasuries are considered to be the safest and most liquid fixed income investment in the world. Despite some closer than comfortable calls during the occasional budget, and or debt ceiling crises, the fact remains that our government has never defaulted on its debt. The same, however, cannot be said for munis. As I mentioned earlier, munis are relatively safe, but the key word here is relative. As you can see from this recent Moody's report on US municipal bond defaults and recoveries, munis are safer overall relative to global corporate bonds. The default rate for munis across all rating grades is noticeably less than the default rate for global corporates across all rating grades. Munis relative to treasuries though is a different story because unlike treasuries, munis are not free of credit risk, not free of default risk. As I mentioned earlier, GO bonds are in theory backed by the full faith and credit of the state, city, or county that issues them, just like treasuries are backed by the full faith and credit of the US government. The difference though is that there have been defaults on GO bonds. Not many, but there have been. Most notably and recently, the city of Detroit in 2013 and the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico in 2016 and 2017. This chart shows some of the most well-known defaults over the past several decades in the muni market. Here's Detroit and here's Puerto Rico, which at around $74 billion dwarfed all other major muni defaults before it. Having said that, muni defaults like that of Detroit and Puerto Rico are rare. In reality, muni default rates have stayed fairly low and stable over time, as you can see from this other Moody's chart. Here's the default rate for the overall municipal market. The light blue bar represents the period from 1970 to 2017. This means that for a sample size of roughly every 1,111 between the period 1970 and 2017, there was one default. The green bar represents the period from 1970 to 2022. The default rate is even less over the slightly longer period. Here is the default rate for GO bonds over the two time periods. And here is the default rate for revenue bonds in the utility sector. And as we can see here, it's the munis in competitive enterprises that have the highest default rates. Competitive enterprises include not-for-profit enterprises such as healthcare, higher education, and housing. It also includes high-risk projects such as stadiums and convention centers. So if an investor wanted to enjoy the tax advantages of a muni while minimizing credit risk, minimizing default risk, one possibility may be to steer clear of higher risk competitive enterprise munis. Overall though, if we had to rank the various fixed income instruments in terms of credit risk alone, treasuries would be at the top with no credit risk for all practical purposes. Then agency bonds, which can be either explicitly or implicitly backed by the US government. 
Check out this video here to learn more about agency bonds if you don't know what they are or how they work. I've linked it below as well. Back to our ranking though. Municipal bonds are next in this credit risk hierarchy and then corporate bonds and lastly, high yield bonds. Which brings us to the question of which type of investor munis might be best suited for. As I always say, everyone's financial journey is different. Generally speaking though, munis might be best suited for investors with a profile similar to this. One, you're in a high marginal tax bracket so that you can make the most of the tax advantages that come with muni bond interest. Two, you're planning to purchase your munis within a taxable account. Now, remember that interest earned on out-of-state munis may be subject to state and local taxes. So if you're buying an out-of-state muni, depending on the yield as well as your individual circumstances, goals, and expectations, there may potentially be a case for holding this in a tax advantage account. But I'll save this one for another day. And three, you're willing to take on a bit more risk to get a bit of a higher return. So for example, I know that some of you in our community have ongoing concerns about the next possible US default as it relates to your treasury holdings. If this is you, the munis may not be a right fit for you. So is this you or not? And if this is you, are you interested more in individual muni bonds or muni ETFs? What other questions do you have about municipal bonds? Drop a comment below and let us know. All right, members and super savers, I hope this video has given you a good first introduction to municipal bonds. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and learned something new, I'd love to invite you to continue to support our channel through membership so that we can keep producing one of a kind, unbiased, sponsorship-free videos for the super saving community. Get your questions answered in our next live member Q&A on September 22nd at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And check out our latest member videos, especially this one here, if you want to learn more about my personal Muni investing strategy right now, as well as the five most common Muni pitfalls. To learn more about Diamond Nest Egg membership, visit our channel page or the join link in the video description for more details. See you again very soon with more brand new wealth building content for your financial journey.